Welcome to Business Talk here on Business Tech, South Africa's largest business news website. And uh, it really has been a transformative couple of years, I think, for so many businesses. Uh, but the period of 2020-21 is certainly going to go down as one of the more transformative uh, for Alex Forbes, the largest administrator of standalone pension funds in the country. We've seen Daniel Malele appointed chair designate as outgoing uh, board chair Marilyn Ramplin says goodbye. We saw uh, the business dispose of its insurance uh, to Momentum while agreeing to buy out EBS International uh, towards the back end of last year. And we also saw Sunlum uh, recently, well, uh, recently, about six or seven months ago, acquiring Forbes' life business uh, for around 100 million rand. So Darby de Villiers, CEO of Alex Forbes, welcome. It really isn't trite to say this has been a transformative period for you. How would you characterize the last couple of years? No, thanks for having me, Michael. It's, um, it's certainly been exciting um, times at Alexander Forbes. You know, we, um, we also think it was quite transformative. We, we decided to, um, to change the business into an advice-led business, advisory business, and therefore not have products anymore and product factories. And that was the main reason for selling, you know, the insurance businesses off. And we've completed that now in the, in the, in the past three years. Um, and now it's time to focus on, on our advisory businesses and our core businesses. And we're quite excited about uh, the journey ahead. I recall chatting to you around 2020 at the time of that um, sale to Momentum and this decision to de-risk your business model. You simplified the structure, uh, taking this kind of capital light advice-led, client-centric, uh, back to your core almost focus. Now that you've completed the exit of your insurance businesses, uh, what are you going to be focusing on? What does 2022 actually look like for the group? Yes, yeah, so so you're right. We've we've completed the transactions, um, and and people called it you know downsizing. It was actually not. It was just basically um, you know transforming the business back to as you say what it was, and 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 at the roots and the strength where we feel we have a, a, a massive competitive advantage in the market. You know, we're one of the only um, big independent advisory business, independent from asset managers, because we have a multi-management um, investment business and independent from insurers, which means we can um, do, you know, best advice to our clients. So we want to focus on that. And, and then these transactions that we did basically amplifies that, you know, we've, we've got more scale, 40% more members under administration. Once the Sunlam transaction is completed, uh, we've got this EBS business, which gives us access to, um, self-administered funds where we can help them um, and then the, the, the platform that we're going to utilize of, of glaciers you know gives us just a much more opportunity to give better service to our members and yep. hopefully you know increase our footprint in that space quite big. I mean that's significant you're already the the largest standalone retirement fund administrator in the country and, and you've up that member base by 40 percent it's always going to give you access to um, uh, good uh, cash flow data you're going to be able to use that data to give members like uh, myself more information in real time about uh, what we hold in those underlines uh, and then as you said you know to upsell to a best of breed lisp like uh, glacier uh, certainly makes a very compelling value proposition. Darby, that is significant scale. And you have mentioned targeting franchises of independent financial advisors while also building up your in-house advisor network. Just share a little bit more about uh, how you're thinking about uh, eating what is a pretty large elephant here. Yes, yeah, so, you know, the, um, the transaction, as I said, gave us a lot of scale on the, on the wholesale side and, and with regards to members under administration. We currently, on our, from our retail advice perspective, only access about 10% of the members under administration, um, and, and that certainly needs to increase. So our, our goal is to increase that uh, by, by quite a lot, not just to have more business, but also to be able to give advice to the whole spectrum of the membership um, under administration. You know, um, I think it's it's, it's just the right thing that a wider range of people get access to, to proper advice with regards to retirement and, and savings. So um, for that, we'll need to have a combination of a few things, but the most important being um, expanding the, the advisor force um, by new recruits, by partnerships, 
and certainly using you know uh, new new forms like AI and 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 digital means to get to 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 more members and that's certainly you know our main goal to get to we're currently the biggest at, at um, advisor in in the corporate space and we want to also become the bigger independent advisor of um, individuals in the retail space. And that's that's a powerful proposition because of your scale, certainly within the, the, the retirement and pension fund space. And back to my earlier point about having access to that data as well. And I've always thought whenever we look at the Alex Forbes uh, survey of how many people are retiring with enough, Every year, it's sort of 6% or thereabout. It doesn't change. And we're, we're our own worst enemies here. You know, since we've uh, moved from the defined benefit to the defined contribution era, uh, we don't preserve when we change jobs. We, we exercise all this very poor financial planning behavior. And I've always thought we could use digital in particular to help shift people, to help nudge them in the right direction. So really uh, is exciting to hear that you, you're going in this direction. How is this going to impact, and you, to come back to the size of the business, because in the past, um, uh, it, you know, some people have mentioned downsizing of the group, and you, you said it really isn't about that. It's about focus. And you talk now about partnerships. Does this mean it's still going to be a capital light approach? You know, I think we can do um, a lot more on our platform with regards to admin, uh, we can advise a lot more clients and then certainly want to uh, become quite a quite a big um, asset manager. We, we already have 420 billion under management, but uh, but certainly that can increase quite a, quite a bit uh, with all of these mm. all of these um, initiatives on the go. So so the aim is to actually grow quite quite a lot, um, obviously, but uh, but in, in the core businesses um, as I've mentioned. I think you've signaled that intent with the appointment of Anne Lepile as uh, CEO for your investment division inside the group. And that became effective uh, this month. What are the goals specifically for that division? Yes, yeah, so um, mainly to grow, you know, uh, but to be impactful. You know, we, we've got such a huge opportunity as a, a multi-manager um, in South Africa, as a, as a meaningful multi-manager in South Africa, to influence policy, to influence uh, uh, behavior of investments. You know, so we're thinking transformation in the industry. We're thinking ESG, um, but certainly, and those things will be very high on Anne's priority list. And then also to become a, a asset manager, a multi-manager that thinks about the individual as well and not just, you know, a fund or, or, a, or a corporate or a, or a wholesale, you know. So think retail. And those areas are big growth areas for us, infrastructure, alternative investments, you know, uh, very much in line with the government policy and government aim. So, so those areas um, all together try to grow, grow the business. And, and I think, you know, mm -hmm the business are actually well positioned for that next level of growth. And, um, and, and Anne is perfectly positioned to do that for us. To bring it back home to the kind of retail fund member, uh, if you know that your funds are being invested in a way that is going to assist uh, government and the private sector help build infrastructure that's going to create a more robust and sustainable and prosperous South Africa over the short, medium and long term, and, and also then feeds into the global goals around sustainability. Well, it, it's a very valuable and meaningful value proposition that comes through all of that as well. Now, uh, fintech, and you touched on digital has gone mainstream, uh, I, I guess, whatever mainstream is nowadays, and it's no longer niche. Uh, where, where do you see Alexander Forbes fitting into this space? Uh, and as I said, I mean, if you don't even know what mainstream even looks like anymore, uh, where do you see yourself playing? So, um, you know, for me, fintech in general, digital fintech enables members or just the general public every man and, 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 and woman in the country, you know, to um, access services at a, at a lower cost and fewer barriers. And that's the essence for, for us. We, we want to interact with all our members and those that are still going to become members of ours, you know, in a more meaningful way, quicker, uh, which means that transaction easier and, and, and take this this retirement hassle out of it and the uncertainty around retirement out of it. So, so for me, the fintech development in, in our space is about communicating with members better, making it easier for them to transact. And, and, and therefore it is mainstream, you know, it's part of the business as is. I'm also 
I'm almost thinking of it as, you know, um, we're going to make the business better and we're going to use the fintech to get us there. And, and, and that's exciting because um, more and more people um, don't want different types of experiences, whether you work with the cell phone company or, you know, ordering food online or work with the retirement fund. You know, you, you want everything to be top end and we have to be there. And, and I, think, yeah. I think it's exciting. It's exciting for members to be able to know more about what's happening to quicker see their values, to, to, to know when, when new things are happening. And, and that's certainly our goal to, to, to bring that into it. Yeah, I mean, if you can bring those touch points almost into a daily conversation with a consumer and you don't want you don't want retirement savers to be switching in and out of different products, but you, you want them to take a lot more ownership and also along that journey to have those nudges uh, as they are engaging with whatever their uh, retirement uh, or investment choices are. Now, the noise around cryptos, uh, it feeds into that. I, I get a stream of emails daily uh, on my various platforms from from just the average Joe and Joanne on the street asking about digital assets. And we've seen Regulation 28 and, and the Treasury's come down quite firmly around whether or not um, uh, Bitcoin should, or cryptos in general, should be included under Regulation 28. Not yet, they say. What are your thoughts on the likes of Bitcoin and other digital currencies? And look, Michael, there's, there's, there's no doubt that Cryptocurrencies, digital assets, you know, are great innovations for future transactions. And, and, and I think, you know, um, is, is, is an exciting part of our future. At the moment, it is a very volatile asset, you know, to, to put something um, like that in retirement funds and hence the hesitation at the moment to regulate it as part of Regulation 28, you know, because... I think retirement fund members need more, you know, certainty and, and understanding of what the asset will deliver. Um, and and, and, and we'll, we'll continue to, to monitor, we'll continue to investigate. We, we have a lot of people on it um, and so does our industry to make sure that we understand it better. And, and you know, when, when individual clients want it, we, you, can, you can access it for them, they can access it themselves. But I think at the moment for the retirement fund industry, it's, it's, it's a bit volatile. And, you know, obviously we need it regulated. Um, that's the big negative about the crypto, crypto uh, investments is, is it's unregulated. And therefore, you know, it, it, it's not under 100% control, uh, but certainly um, something to stay into the future and keep an eye on. Yeah, too much counterparty risk. And we've heard far too many horror stories, Mirror Trading International and others, where because of that counterparty risk, uh, your, your, your funds could be lost, your, your Bitcoin or whatever they are. Now, Darby de Villiers, we're going to have to leave it there. CEO of Alex Forbes, thanks so much for sharing a little bit more about uh, the new uh, fitter, Lena Mina, Alex Forbes, with us here on Business Talk. Take care. Thank you, Michael.